court. No idea who's going to play and who's not going to play, but at least we can talk X's and O's and see some of these new Laker faces. Good to see you, BT. It's good to be seen, Gear. You too, Brezahan. <laughs> <laughs> Let's jump right into it. BT. Practice continued right today away. from just down the road in El Segundo. It was Quinn Cook's first practice after clearing COVID protocols. But of course, the big story is that there's a game tomorrow night, Friday. Head coach Frank Vogel on getting the preseason underway against the Clippers. We did add to the group today. We had uh, almost a, a full roster uh, at practice today. Alfonso McKinney uh, is still out uh, with an excused absence. And uh, as far as tomorrow goes, um, Anthony and LeBron will not play. And uh, some of the new guys uh, are still to be determined. Um, we haven't made final decisions on uh, you know which guys are going to play which games uh, other than uh, Anthony and LeBron will not play tomorrow. I feel like in years past, when you guys are going through training camp and that first preseason game, finally being able to see another opponent um, comes up, there's an excitement because you're ready to go against someone else but yourself. How different is that feeling now? How would you describe what that feeling is like as you guys are already facing an, an opponent tomorrow? Yeah, I, I definitely feel like it's different. Um, this is a shorter, a shorter training camp for us. With regard to um, you know when the first game is, uh, what the build up to this camp has looked like, not doing double sessions because of concerns of um, you know COVID and the testing, and you know obviously the you know, where our guys are, are at with a, from a conditioning standpoint. So you know I don't really feel like this this year has that same kind of man. I can't wait to to bang on another team. Uh, because we've been beating ourselves up uh, so much in camp. Just wondering what you anticipate about playing in Staples Center um, as opposed to the games in the bubble and you know, how, how you think that mix of being in your home arena but not having it be the typical experience it's going to be and if there's anything that you mentioned uh, along those lines as you game plan and such. Yeah, I mean, I think I think there will be more of a home court advantage uh, for for teams this season than there was in the bubble uh, because of travel more than the in-game environment. Um, you know, obviously the the arena will feel more uh, more comfortable to us uh, than than to to our opponents. But you know, with no fans there, you're not really getting that that energy differential. Um, you know, as to what ex what to expect for what it's going to feel like, who knows? You know, I mean, I, I, the, the league has said that some of the arenas are going to have the, the, the pumped in noise, but not necessarily all of them. Um, you know, I, I don't even know what we're doing, to be honest with you. I haven't really been paying attention to that. But it's definitely going to feel different than, than the bubble. You know, it's just a far bigger building, more space. Um, you know, so we'll just have to see how it feels. Just four preseason games. Just like you like it, Brez. It's going to be quick. You got tomorrow, Friday, Sunday against the Clippers, right? Those two. And then Wednesday and a week from Friday, the Suns. And then it's the regular season. How much will we be seeing LeBron and AD during the preseason, if at all? I would guess uh, one half of one game. I don't think we'll see him uh, in the next game. I'd be really surprised. Uh, maybe they jump in for game three. Just for a half, kind of, kind of get acclimated just a little bit. I mean, Frank Vogel and Rob Plank have been saying all along, we're going to talk to them a lot. We're going to communicate with them, with the representatives. Whatever they feel like doing, we're, we're going to try to accommodate them. Uh, you know, they have to play the big TV games, so they're going to be out there on the 22nd for the season opener, and then three days later for uh, uh, Dallas on Christmas Day. But maybe they start punting a couple games after that. Maybe you got the back-to-back -back on the 27th and the 28th. Maybe they sit out one of those two games. What do you think, BT? I mean, you're not worried about them, but you do maybe want to give them a little burn, but, you know, you want to navigate through it. You need some time just for them to get in basketball shape and also to have the Brian and AD to learn how to play with Marcus Saul, to play with Montrez Harrell, Dennis Schroeder, Wesley Matthews. Those things don't happen overnight, although I keep hearing that it's working out really good in the practice sessions. But you need both guys, AD and LeBron, to get their win to get their game back together, their legs back together underneath them. But the key is making sure that they are healthy and they don't sustain any injuries along the way. Now, speaking of uh, LeBron and AD, Markeith Morris posted this on Instagram today. Boys in the parking lot, look at them. Two twins, look at them. Come on, close, close. Look at them. He's in the parking lot. 
crazy out here in LA. So that's Markeith Morris having some fun. You got LeBron and AD just chilling. So listen, uh, <laughs> earlier we heard Frank Vogel mention uh, how players need to kind of adapt to playing at Staples Center with no fans. Uh, what are some of the challenges you guys foresee playing regular season games mm -hmm. in arenas like Staples Center with no fans? Remember what it was like in the bubble, the adjustment that it took. This is going to be even much different than that. Yeah, the bubble, small arena. Maybe you fit a couple thousand people in there, and they had the giant big screens all around, you know, the fans of the day popping in and out of, of the, the TVs down there. Now you're talking like 19,000, 20,000 seat arenas. Might be some blind spots if, you, if you're shooting jumpers uh, with no one in the seats. It's, it's going to be a bizarre situation uh, just when you think uh, 2020 can't get any more unique and unusual. Here we go. Now they're in giant, uh, unfilled arenas. Uh, I'm curious, BT, because mm. the guys in the bubble, maybe they'll be a little more used to it than some of the players that did not play. Uh, but those guys talked about the mental preparation and battle just to kind of get over the fact that no one's there to fire us up. You're looking for the emotion. You can't draw off fans. It took a while for these guys to get adjusted. It's going to be even different now. It did. But one thing about the bubble, those are playoff games. So you are playing for something. And what it took was some of their teammates that were on the bench not playing, guys like Jared Dudley, making sure that they were screaming, they were yelling. They were encouraging their teammates. When they play at Staples in a regular season game or the Lakers play in Indiana, you don't have those fans to give you that energy. You don't have opposing fans to call you a bunch of names, nasty names, to get you fired up. You don't have your own fans to kind of push you on, to cheer you on, to keep you kind of in the right groove. Not having fans, I think, would be difficult. But the Lakers went through that. So did 22 other teams in the NBA. So those teams, and especially the Lakers, I think they'll be fine. It just takes some adjustment because, as Brad says, you're now playing inside of an arena that holds maybe 20,000 fans and it's empty. Yeah, seeing games from the bubble didn't look so odd. It was a small space. Hard to notice there weren't fans there at Staples Center. We're used to seeing 19,000 fans tomorrow night. It's going to look and feel really weird. With more on the empty arena, Marcus All. We haven't really talked about our situation specifically. Um, we talked a little bit about, you know, how the other teams, some of the teams seem like they're going to have some people at the arenas and, and it goes from state to state. Um, so that, that to me um, still brings um, some questions, um, but that's for me personal that I, you know, I'd like to a little more explaining um, how come that uh, some arenas, they allow fans and some arenas don't understand, you know, the. Uh, different laws in different states, um, but I think we should have uh, the same for, for everyone. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, but, you know, that's, that that's what we talk about. Your brother spoke to Zach Lowe and said that um, playing for the Lakers, playing with you is a goal of his. I guess kind of what was your reaction to that? And have you guys spoken at all about the possibility of maybe trying to, to play together in the NBA? I think it's up to his health first uh, and foremost. Uh, but has to um, be healthy and has has to continue to stay healthy uh, throughout the process process of rehabbing, um, building that endurance and building you know um, on that uh, continuous impact on 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 his foot on his bone um, is going to be crucial. The only way um, you know that is through playing. Uh, so he I think he has to find a way um, to. To play a little bit to see how his body reacts to that, and and uh, you know I think that's that should be the main focus right now instead of you know where uh, where he's going to play. Um, you know more important is you know is his health and uh, how he feels and how his body reacts to the you know to the workload. I speak for all three of us. We love Pal. This is a great story, but realistically, Brez, could Pal make it back and grab a spot with the Lakers? Uh, it's going to be tough. All right, he's 40 years old, has not played in the NBA in almost two years. And when he did play in, in that last year, he wasn't averaging many points. Uh, it would be a great kind of story of, of redemption because when Powell left here in 2014 to go to the, the Bulls, he took less money. He was ready for a change of scenery. There had been a lot of trade rumors kind of bandied about uh, using his name for a couple years before he left. So he didn't leave in a real great way. But this would be a really nice way to kind of bring him back into the fold. Obviously, he would be towards the end of the bench. Don't need to rely on him for 25 minutes a night. And like you said, one of the best guys I've ever worked with. Always loved interviewing him and, and just talking to him in general. Way in, BT. I mean, I'm like, Brad, it'll be difficult. 
The last time I spoke to Powell was in June, and nothing has really changed regarding his health. He's had two surgeries on his left foot. That's a difficult thing to overcome when you're 40 years old and you're trying to play the game of basketball. I mean, I hope it happens. It'd be great to have him here. But Powell also has an ego, and he should. And if he does play, I'm sure he doesn't want to sit on the end of the bench eating popcorn, talking to Mike Bresenhan <laughs> at halftime. And he wants to play in a meaningful game and have a meaningful uh. role. And I just don't see that happening with him if he happens to sign a contract. But it would be great for Laker fans to see him make this one last run because he gives you that bridge between the last championship in 2010 mm -hmm. and he gets a chance to play with his brother again if that happens. Hey, BT, nice paper towel yes. rack behind you. <laughs> I, brother, I, I cook in my house. What do you do? Uh, Order out. He's got a crock pot now. <laughs> All right, more reaction. Non-traditional media and picture day this year. Let's get a look at some of the pictures. LeBron James, year 18. Brez, you wish you looked like that. You're 18, don't you, buddy? Shoot, I, 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 I wish I looked like that at any time in my life. <laughs> He's very pensive down there in the bottom right, though. What's, what uh, are you thinking about right there, Guy? Uh, this is the media day I like. Uh, check out the kicks. <laughs> Purple and gold remix. Lakers uh, sneaker cam. That's okay. real nice okay. right there. Good kicks. Uh, AD was also looking good, BT, as you can, can imagine. The brow is back for take two. Oh. There's that oh, screen that you he like. Look, man, he looks pensive too at the bottom. What's going on with these guys? Must be a new look, guys. Uh, kind of look, uh, look a little pensive, a little melancholy maybe. Yeah, you, yeah. you know what I wish those guys? Thinking? I wish I had, I wish I had some hair like they have. I don't have any. Left. BT, they can fix that. There's products out there. And then we got uh, Montrez Harrell mm -hmm. <laughs> getting his first pitch taken Not in the Lakers. Pensive. Uni, <laughs> these colors look good <laughs> on you. Lakers are tweeting out. He's as happy as can be. Oh yeah. You know he still gets BT to cover him too. So it's a win-win for Trez. BT, follow Trez yes, wherever sir. he goes. BT. Yeah, man, and he's got that hair again. Man, what's yes, going sir. on? There? Is there a bald-headed guy on the team? You jealous of his hair too? Here's Quinn Cook. The two-time champ is here. Glad Remember, he won one with the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, I'm glad he's back. Good dude. Oh, Very man. good interview. Earlier and, uh, today, Cook talked about he's why he's uh, back with the Lakers. Me, you know, being a super fan of a team, um, and then me being a super fan of a player, Braun, and, you know, him being my teammate and me being on that team, I mean, I literally used to dream that every single day um, when I was growing up. And for me to manifest that and actually accomplish it um, was great. But uh, I still have a lot to prove to myself and, 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 and to this league. And uh, last year was very motivating for me um, just to see, you know, what it takes to be great in this league, seeing Rondo and Brown on an everyday basis at that, you know, point guard spot. You know, I thought I worked hard. I thought I was doing a lot. But I have to take my, you know, and I've taken my stuff to another level. And obviously me getting waved with the business, um, a little, a lot, a lot more motivation as well. But you know, me being very grateful um, to come back and, and, and then want me back. I mean, that was that meant a lot to me. That meant a lot to me for them to bring me back and you know, um, make me feel special. And, and, and I know how much you know, Coach believes in me. I know how much Rob, Kurt, Jeannie. I know how much they believe in me. Um, so that meant a lot. And I want to you know, make them proud by you know, being ready. I mean, I know from a media perspective, we're all happy. Yeah. And from a fan perspective, Quinn Cook is awesome. He appreciates where he is. He grew up a huge Laker fan. Everyone knows the story. Um, he wears the jersey with such pride. Different circumstances all around for Cook this season. What do you think his role is going to be, Brez? Can it be different? Uh, yeah. I mean, look, there were a couple games last year where he came off the bench, and he did score more than 20 points. So he can still fill it up on occasion. Uh, this year, though, I don't know what's going to happen with him. I mean, Schroeder is obviously, if Schroeder comes off the bench, he's going to get a massive amount of the playing time uh, as the point guard. And Cook's going to have to just kind of wait a little bit. He played 44 games last season, you know, about, about two-thirds of, of the Lakers games. And uh, he might not play that many this year. But it's a good story, Guy. Remember, the Lakers initially declined uh, his, his, uh, to bring him back uh, a few weeks ago. They, they gave him a part of his non-guaranteed contract. And then they circled back around, signed a bunch of guys, and said, you know what? We're going to bring him back. So good for him, good for the Lakers. And he did do this in Golden State. He can jump in from time to time, get you your 20 points. Don't know how many chances he will have this year to do that. Mm -hmm. BT? I think his big chances will come when they're resting guys. 
And let's hope no one can't play because of COVID. But if that happens, then that gives Quinn another chance to get some action. But as Brad says, most likely Quinn Cook is the third string point guard behind LeBron James mm -hmm. and also behind Dennis Schroeder. But, you know, it's a long season, even though it's only 72 games, even though we don't know if they're going to complete 72 games. But the idea that you have someone who's been in the system, who knows the players, and as Brad said, who can make outside shots and is just a good teammate. But the number one role for him would to be a good teammate, play very hard in practice, and to prepare his teammates and to be vocal when those fans are not there and the place is empty. He has to be one of the guys that's always cheering his teammates on, making sure they have the right energy to play in these games. Well said. In other uh, NBA news today, I'm not sure you guys caught this, six-time All-Star Paul George has signed a four-year extension to stay with the Clippers. It's a max extension added on top of his $35 million deal for this season and replaces his player option for the 21-22 season. He's now guaranteed as much as $226 million over the next five seasons. I mean, listen, AD now sounds like a bargain. <laughs> right, BT? But listen, good for the Clippers. Good for the Clippers in all seriousness. This gets him there long term. But that's a lot of money, man. And look, it's good money. I don't care what you guys say. One ninety is one ninety. I take it. <laughs> Why complain? Give me one hundred ninety million dollars. See if I complain about it. I ain't doing that. No, 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 no. Look, AD did a deal the way he wanted. He felt fine with the deal he has. But let's not forget, AD can also opt out after the fourth season. And I think he'll be what thirty-one years old, something like that. So then, if he signs another four-year deal or a five-year deal. He can sign for a lot more money than what he's making now. I would say this, Mike Bresenhan. I don't think those guys will be eating bubble gum at night. <laughs> I think BT, they eat what do you think about that, Mike Bresenhan? <laughs> well, Broderick Turner, I, I think you make close to that at the LA Times. You've been there for a while. I'm sure you're climbing up on the pay raise poll over there. Oh, he's getting paid. Yeah, he's getting paid. He better be anyway. Yeah. I, I, want to be, I want to be his agent if that's not the case. Uh, th th I'm not surprised by this. All right, the Clippers gave up a lot of, of draft capital to get uh, Paul George. Five first-round draft picks. By comparison, Lakers only gave up three first-round draft picks to get AD. Um, but the bottom line is, I'm not surprised that he's staying. Uh, the Clippers, of course, they're going to offer him the max. He better be, be better, better be better than he was in the bubble. Not such a good run for him there, but uh, he's a good player overall for sure. You know BT's getting paid. That uh, paper towel Ooh. rack you were talking about costs 2 k <laughs> That's All right, uh, this quote from uh, Paul George via All the Smoke podcast. Matt Barnes and Jax, I, I, I'm as locked in as you can be. Listen to Kobe on a daily basis. Ooh, I'm on mother, like you know what, asses. All you know the smoke what? podcast. Credit to him. I mean, Kobe, such a motivator. You know, he always met with these guys, even when he was still playing uh, during the offseason. Remember, he, he took a young Russell Westbrook under his arm, tried to help him out a little bit during the offseason. And uh, that, that's great stuff from, from Paul right there. Listen, Brez, last season, as, as we go to the Lakers here, they took a page out of the Mamba playbook and led with defense in their run for a championship. Two key players on that Lakers defense, and, and you can throw in Rondo because of how he played in sure. the playoffs, so make it three. JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard no longer with the Lakers. So you add Trez, Gasol, Schroeder, Wes Matthews. Are the Lakers just as strong defensively? I know they're different, but can they be as good? Because that really is what won them the championship. Yeah. In those playoff series when they were down 1-0 twice. Yeah. I mean, you had, you had Dwight running around out there yep. kind of antagonizing uh, 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 Nikola Jokic. You know, you had Danny Green. Didn't really shoot all, all that well. Uh, didn't score a ton of points. That's not his game. But, you know, it's interesting. I, I hear what you say when they're different. Not nearly as much rim protection, but obviously you still have Anthony Davis. That's a good start. It's going to come down to Schroeder. How good is he on the perimeter? A uh, scrappy guy, kind of a bulldog, uh, doesn't take a lot of games off. And you can, the same could be said actually for Montrez Harrell, a tough guy. He's revving uh, in the red line every time he plays. So that's going to be big when a guy like uh, LeBron or AD is not playing that particular night, say a midseason game in Charlotte or something like that. So I think they'll be scrappier. I don't know if they'll have as many block shots and, and game uh, changing plays at the basket. Yeah, much different. BT? I think they can be equally as good, number one, because the head coach, Frank Bogle, will demand that they play great defense. And everyone on that team knows they won a title by playing great defense. And let's not forget, Marcus Gasol once was the defensive player of the year. 
So he's also a good defender. Maybe he doesn't block shots at the rim as well as Dwight Howard did and JaVale McGee, but he uses his body well, and he is long at 6'11". And let's not forget, Wesley Matthews is a 3 and D guy. He's a good defender on the wing players, and a guy like Kyle Kuzma, who keeps working on his defense, mm -hmm. will be dependent upon. Alex Caruso plays good defense, and then the shooter, you now have a point guard with speed and quickness to defend all those other fast point guards out there. So I think they can be equally as good, if not better, if they get the system in place and they play basketball the right way. All right. Just in this league, and did a lot of good things, but I think with this team, it's uh, something special going. They want to compete, of course, uh, on a high level and uh, win titles, but they're having fun as well. So, you know, uh, I think I fit in perfectly. It's an honor for me to play here and uh, try to compete for for big things. I'm just doing anything and everything I can to help complement these guys because they already did well. They've already shown and proven that they can win a championship without the pieces that we've added this year. Uh, so I'm just coming in looking to do it. Anything I can to compliment that chemistry that these guys already have built. I'm ready to get in there and start playing magic with the uh, reigning NBA champions. When this opportunity presented itself. You know, I'm a competitor. I want to win. I want to win at, at, at the highest level. And there's nothing like being being wanted by you know the best team. I'm definitely excited for the spacing. I'm excited for the style of play. The fit work as far as style of play. And here now, now I can't wait to get to work. They act as a family, they're all on the same page. Uh, you know, they have very clear vision of what they want and how they want to do it. That's what, uh, you know, attracted me to join the team. They're not content, they're not satisfied. You know, they're all fired up, even though it's been a quick turnaround. they all very excited and, and ready to go. I'm just very, very excited to be part of, of all that and, and, and get to work. A busy offseason for Rob Polinka and the world champs LeBron and AD have a new look supporting cast. We get to see them tomorrow night, Friday. It's going to be great, the preseason opener. We know those guys are playing, so that's exciting. Uh, we love the preseason, right? I mean, it's hoops. We don't, we, sure. don't, we, don't, we don't talk about it that much, Brez. We're always looking to the 22nd and all that. But still, it's a lot of fun, and there's some great plays. So we're going to look back to last year's preseason for the top 10 Ooh. plays. How about that? All right. Brad Turner, Mike Bresnan. <laughs> number 10, KCP is going to kick us off with some hops at number 10. Throwing it down, VT. Look at KCP get up Ooh. and hammer it. Let's go to number 9, listen in. Now what he wanted to do, he's in no man. Shoot man. a 3, shoot a 3. Oh, he is going to shoot a 3. JaVale, he's got it. <laughs> you know the old saying, when in doubt, shoot. Uh, after this game, I went in the locker room and I said, are you going to be JaVale Mc3? And uh, like he, he kind of laughed at me. <laughs> yeah, that, that did not happen. Check this, this one out, it. BT. Number eight, we'll do a little mm -hmm. access uh, 360 with it. Anthony Davis. Okay. Oh, ooh, Spin. Ooh, let, oh, yeah, watch him read spin. the D, though. I like that. Caruso's going to cut, BT. And there's your reverse mm -hmm. layup. Let's look at it again. Yeah, I like that. Caruso always moving, always thinking. AD with a nice dime. Ooh. Shake and bite. Got him. A best hand would have missed that shot. Of no chance, Lance. Number seven, this time AD on the receiving end. He spins off his defender. Rondo, we saw this so many times. Man, we're going to miss this, aren't we? Brez? Yeah, those two had a really good chemistry. It's tough to see Rondo go. He got a good deal from Atlanta. I see why he grabbed it, but those two obviously had a little, little, little sixth sense right there. Uh, number six, check this out, the decoy move. <laughs> uh... So I hit my knee. I really hit my knee, and it hurt. But I went out of bounds, and I saw Draymond grabbing an AD, and I was like, forget the pain. I'm going to go get these buckets. <laughs> so I just ran back in and got it done. But I really did blow my knee. Remember that one, BT? <laughs> yeah, don't hurt no more, man. <laughs> Number five, AD. Overpowering on the glass. Remember that statement he made, the opener against Golden State? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and you, you watch him from afar for uh, seven years, and then you realize this guy is on the Lakers. We will be seeing a lot of that. You know what? We did. Number four, LeBron and AD showing that chemistry, guys, from the preseason on. There's that little slip screen bounce Love pass. It. Yeah, pocket pass. Pocket pass. Didn't take long for those guys to get this together. Not at all. But then you got AD. That's kind of easy. It really is. Number three, Access 360 again, Perez. It's Caruso to LeBron, who in midair sees an open Dwight Howard. And he's going to dump it off for the alley-oop. He sees the defender come over. 
That's a twice. nice pass. When you're in the air and you grab the ball and, and, and touch it up like that, that's hard to do. Uh, let me tell you. Uh, I've never tried it. I never will try it. But that uh, nice degree of difficulty. Good job by Dwight to be in position. Remember Zach Norbell Jr.? Check it out. Norbell Ooh. puts Poole down. Oh. Norbell all the way oh. scores. Oh. Oh, and the bench loves oh. it. They explode. That's not fair. BT okay, fans wanted guy. him to start last year. <laughs> well, I'm glad he did. But, you know, he, he shows some of the stuff here. Glad he did. No, that's okay. <laughs> All right, let's go to number you know? one play of the preseason last year. It all started with AD. Um, AD seen me streaking down the middle and, and gave me a great outlet pass to the middle where I was able to continue my momentum. I had to get it to him some way, somehow. And, and I, I didn't know it was going to result in that, but um, you know, my ability to pass the ball, I just wanted to get it to dead shot right on time and on target. It was, it was one of my... It's up there. This up there. Unreal. So let me get this right. Uh, yep. No look. Yep. Over his left shoulder, yep. all the way out to the three-point line exactly for an easy happened. three for Danny Green. That's exactly what happened. Number one play pretty, pretty nice. of the preseason yeah. of 2019. I get it. it seems so long Not ago. Bad. I like JaVale's ouch seems play, so too. long ago, doesn't <laughs> it? It was like three years ago. Wow. All right, four preseason games coming up. Two against the Clippers. Two against uh, our director, Brian Bergen's sons. What's the Lakers' <laughs> biggest preseason storyline for you, BT? You know, it will be low management, really. Trying to figure out who's going to play, who doesn't play, how long guys get a chance to play in a game, and when will AD and LeBron James actually play in a preseason game? Will it? It won't be tomorrow night. Will it be Sunday against the Clippers? I don't think so. I'm with Brez again. I think it will happen when they play at Phoenix, either Game Three at Phoenix or perhaps Game Four, maybe both of those games, but not long minutes. Brez. Yeah, uh, kind of similar to what BT is saying. You know, to me, the biggest uh, preseason storyline, how do you blend all these new faces in there? And it's not like guys who are going to be at the end of the bench for the Lakers, presumably uh, one starter, uh, maybe even two. depends what Frank Vogel wants to do. How do you get these guys going? You know, fewer games than usual, four instead of six in the preseason. The same thing for the regular season. Uh, you want to sit guys out. It's preseason. No one remembers this. Uh, it was f fun to watch the top ten, but I didn't really remember any of those preseason plays from last year. You just got to make sure the guys get out there and get to know each other a little bit. This team is not built for the regular season, obviously not for the preseason. Like you, Chris McGee, it is built for the playoffs. That's what you got to keep built in mind. Built for the playoffs, That's, that's going to start at the end of May. But just, you know, just get, get to know each other a little bit, I guess. All right, let's, let's stick with the preseason mode on the storylines here. Which Laker are you most looking forward to seeing play during the preseason, BT? We got four games. Who do you want to see the most? Kyle Kuzma. Okay. Because like Kyle it. Kuzma wants to be a starter in this league. And perhaps if he plays well, this could lend itself to him being a starter and actually making a lot of money for years to come. But the idea that he wants to prove everyone that he can start alongside LeBron James and AD, that he's improved on his defense, his ball handling, his all around skills. Kuzma is a guy that I want to see, and I want to see him play the game the right way and to just let the game come to him. This is year four coming up for him. I think he's ready, but he gets a chance to battle for that position, and we'll see if he can be the starter long term. I don't, say, I don't say this a lot, but BT, that was a good answer. I wish I thought of that. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Schroeder. It's right, rare this, for you to yeah, I know. say that. I know. I, I got I to give props yeah, to him. It's, it's um, your class. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Schroeder. All right, OKC was done almost six weeks before the Lakers were in the bubble. Remember, they lost in the first round. It went seven games, lost by only two to Houston. But he's had a little bit more time than the rest of the Lakers uh, to kind of get, get himself together. Motivated. Motivated for sure. Um, you know, is he going to start? Is he going to come off the bench? What, what's that going to look like? We know he wants to start. Obviously, Frank Vogel is going to make up, uh, uh, he's going to make that decision. And how's that three-point touch? You know, career high, 39% for Schroeder last season. It's only the preseason, but how does it look for him behind the arc just, you know, just in the month of, uh, of December here. You know what? Both of you had great answers. Oh, there. Finally, that. the top 10 from ESPN's player rankings are at 100 players in the NBA, and today they've released the top 10. The Lakers have the top two spots with LeBron and AD. How about that? Last year, Giannis claimed the top spot. Remember, Kawhi was two. I believe LeBron was three, yep, but he has five. reclaimed the title. Uh -huh. It's the ninth time in 10 years on ESPN's list. LeBron James has been number one. You see the rest of the top 10 right there. It's pretty darn good. Giannis, how about Luka jumping to four? Kawhi, KD, Dane, Lillard, Steph, James Harden, and Jokic. Where's Caruso? Caruso's 12th, I believe. Okay. Uh, so listen, um, 
AD was fifth on that list. Uh, after one season together, they're now one and two. What do you think? Did they get it right? Do they deserve to be one and two on this list, Brad? What are you going to say? They got it right. The other day on the show, I predicted Giannis would be one and those guys uh -huh. would be two and three because there's kind of like a, a media bias mm -hmm. towards Giannis. People love him. All right, he got the uh, uh, MVP in a landslide. He got the Defensive Player of the Year award in a landslide. AD should have got several more votes than he did. He was a distant second. I figured ESP would kind of fall into that trap. We love Giannis. Uh, might be his last year in Milwaukee. He's young. He's good at both ends. ESPN got it right. Those two guys should have vaulted from three and five to one and two. BT, KD is back. Guys are motivated. Mm -hmm. Kawhi is motivated. Giannis got knocked out. Uh, are you going one and two, LeBron AD? Hey, man, I'm motivated. How about that? <laughs> okay? No, I am. When you win an NBA championship, obviously there's a reason behind that, and that's because of AD and LeBron James. What I am a little surprised by is that KD was six only because he hasn't played a whole year. So if you haven't played, how good is he really? He was not any good last year because, well, he didn't play in the game. Yeah, I think you got to So kind of that's my only surprise. We, draw, but, yeah. look, we, we just don't know yet. But AD and LeBron James won a title, yeah. he won it two. So that's the best ranking for them to be in right now, yes. without a doubt. So listen, ESPN counted out the top 100. The Lakers not only had one and two, they ended up having six total players make that list. Montrez Harrell came in at 76. KCP was 77. Uh, Dennis Schroeder, 79. Marcus Gasol still on that top 100. Still holding they on. had him at 96. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, pretty impressive roster right there, Bress. Yeah, it's a testimony to the Laker front office. You know, we've talked about them uh, time and again on these shows. Uh, they, they did a lot of really good work with not a lot of capital. It's not like they had a good uh, young lottery player uh, who was on the team in the last year or two, not getting a ton of time that they could dangle. I mean, they turned Danny Green and a late, late first round pick into Dennis Schroeder. And then they went out and they signed Montrez Harrell with, with their big free agent tool, uh, spending wise. I didn't even consider him. I figured he was going to be back with the Clippers for like 17, 18, 19 million a year. I mean, this, these have been coups for the Lakers to get these guys filled in with, with Wesley Matthews. Great, great work. And, and Marcus Hall, of course, great, great work by the Laker front office. Go ahead, BT. Without a doubt, this is why the Lakers are the favorites to repeat. And as Brad says, Rob Palenka did a great job. But let's not forget Kurt Rammers. He sure. was also involved in this. He's just a, a special assistant. But the idea that they have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six guys in the top 100? I mean, Bresahan can make the top 1 million <laughs> on anyone's board. But we do have this right here with these guys. I think ESPN got it right. Why not agree with them sometimes? Like, I don't agree with Bresahan any of the time. But uh, it's, it's, it's good for the Lakers because now they know they have weapons up and down the board everywhere you can look, center, guard, forwards, off the bench, starting. They will be a tough team to beat. Listen, fellas, the season starts in just under two weeks, right, Brez? December 22nd. It's coming. We have friends that watch this show that you know, want to hear about other teams. So let's, let's take the Lakers out of it. What's your most intriguing NBA storyline? You can go first, BT. Well, it's Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant in Brooklyn. They also have a first-year coach, Steve Nash. I want to see how they put that team together. They have a lot of talent on that team, but they're in a pretty good, tough conference. Let's be honest now, the East is not weak. They're tough up top with Boston, Milwaukee, Philadelphia will be better. No, but the two, those two guys have won titles. They're playing together for the first time because KD's coming back from injury. How we didn't play their full season because he was hurt. How they learn to merge and get consistency together will be the key to them. They will be tough to beat. But I want to see how they get it all mixed with a first-year coach, Steve Nash. Brez, what about for you? Number one storyline. BT's going to take KD's new team. I'm going to go with his old team, the Golden State Warriors. Yep. Uh, what are they going to do? No Clay Thompson. We all know that by now. Shattering news up there in the Bay Area. But still, you know, are they going to be maybe like a top five team in the West? Are they going to be, be in a play-in to get a playoff spot? Or are they just going to kind of say, you know, we, uh, we're, we're kind of a, a, a middling, maybe barely squeaking in. Maybe we just kind of rest the guys for the rest of the year and, and go for another lottery pick. Fascinated to see what they do. I think they have too much talent to not make the playoffs or at least the, the 10 team uh, play in. Remember, it's 10 teams this year. Kind of a cool yeah. concept. But curious to see what happens up there. Still can't believe Clay out for another year. Still makes me sad, Brad. Yeah, Still awful. makes me sad. Awful. All right, great stuff from you guys. What a year for LeBron James. Another NBA championship, another MVP finals.
uh, award, and now he's been named by Time Magazine as the Athlete of the Year, not just for his work on the court, but for his voice during racial injustice and for launching more than a vote, a much-deserved honor. And we've said it repeatedly, and it's worth acknowledging once again, LeBron James has used his platform, guys, to inspire people and work for change. And his legacy off the court is perhaps greater than what he does on the court press. Yeah, and what an honor for him. You know, it's one thing to be the uh, SI person of the year, but now you're talking Time Magazine, obviously a, uh, a big crossover there for him and much deserved. I, I realize how, how important this guy was off the court right after the Lakers acquired him, you know, a couple of years ago uh, via free agency. And he, he uh, announced the I Promise Charter School back in his hometown of uh, Akron, Ohio. And, and that, that was a big investment. You know, some people reported up, upwards of 50 million. And so that, that's a big, big deal right there for him to do something like that. And of course, it's continued since then with the, uh, the, the get, get the Vote Out initiative, uh, trying to get arenas throughout the country open for, for the big election day last month. This guy can, can do, uh, there's not much more he can do off the court than he already has. Very impressive. BT? The idea that LeBron James decides he doesn't mind being uncomfortable, he doesn't mind stepping out of his comfort zone, and that the idea that people will criticize him for not just shutting up and dribbling the basketball, you have to respect that. He has athletes, entertainers now educating themselves. He has a younger generation of people and young men and women now understanding what it takes to be successful, to give a part of yourself to understand that it's not just about playing a sport. It's just not about singing or rapping or whatever you do. You could always do more to help your community out. And that's why I think he was the Time Magazine Athlete of the Year, because he's willing to put himself out there to help others. You know, we've seen big changes in LeBron over the years. Uh, like all of us, he's learned some things along the journey. After winning his fourth NBA title, he questioned those who still doubt him. And talk expanded on that when he joined us uh, in studio for Road Tripping. It's the people on TV and there's writers that write that people in the basketball world really listen to mm -hmm. and they really believe. And I'm not going to give any of those names on this show because they don't deserve it. You want me to? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'll, I'll retweet it when you tweet okay, it. Okay, uh, <laughs> oh God. okay. That continue to discredit or, or continue to not to understand what, you know, the drive that I put into it. You know, you know, they talk about these players or, well, he doesn't have that same drive as them, or he doesn't have that same mentality as those. If he did, he had, like, and, and they see what I continue to accomplish. So, you know, it, it, it was, a, it was, it was a, a reassurance to myself, but it was also like to the naysayers and to the haters, which will always be there, even after I'm done playing. I'm always going to be right here. And to Channing. be right here. Yeah, you know, I, I hear it, I see it, and um, just like, one of the words I've been using today, holding them accountable. Yeah. And I'm holding them accountable. Listen, Kobe, Jordan, Tiger, Brady, who, whomever, all the greats, uh, they use any slightest motivation. Uh, they remember everything. Um, does LeBron still have something to prove in your eyes? No, but here's going to be his personal challenge because you know he's going to try to think of something to get him motivated for this year. Uh, he had another good quote on, on that road trip and podcast. He said, hey, has anyone ever done what I've done as far as winning two really difficult championships? You, you had the one uh, four years ago uh, against Golden State. First team ever to come back from three to one in the finals to win it all. And then he had this year, the longest NBA season ever. Uh, took turns that nobody could have ever fathomed. Now he can say, all right, shortest layoff ever for, for any championship team. So he can kind of motivate himself by that. Go ahead, LeBron, use that if you'd like. But uh, that would be just another thing. He doesn't have to prove anything to anyone. But if he does get that one for the thumb this year, he could, uh, again, say short layoff, another long championship run. None of these guys ever have anything to prove. I agree with Brez. But I think LeBron, like so many of these greats, you have to have that thing that gets you up and working Whatever out. If not, you'd be on the beach <laughs> drinking a margarita. <laughs> like BT. And Baja. <laughs> Look, people think he's too old to win another championship. He'll be 36 at the end of this month. So what he has to prove is to himself that, yes, I can win a title. I can win another one, the fifth one. Brass, he signed a two-year contract ex extension. He didn't sign that just to hang out and drink margaritas with you.